What's going on everybody? I am super stoked. I mean, look. I've been itching for one of these for a while. I was fortunate enough to uh, know a guy who owns this, who said I could bring it over here to the property and use it all I wanted to. It's got a few things that needs fixed on it. It's been sitting for a few years, it hasn't been used. Let me get this pressure washed. I hope it fits in the garage. It's pretty tall, it's gonna take a little bit of maneuvering. And then I'll show you the stuff as we go through it. Well, it's in. I'm not sure how, but it's in. Look right here, out close. That's awesome. I don't know what it was to take to bend that. I don't guess they're made that way. That's some thick metal to bend. Wow. I want to get this panel right here off and look in there, see what I see, what needs to be done. Then I'm going to pop that thing right there off and get in there so I can see those wires a little better. Oh yeah. So looking at it, I mean these belts from what I see so far, don't it don't look too bad. It's, I was just wanting to get this off and try to make sure everything is decent in here. I'm gonna say this is a bearing and it should have oil in it and I'm not real sure. Uh, I'm not real sure. I don't think that it does now that I'm looking at it. Looks like a hose would go here and that's dripping and there ain't really nothing in it. Huh, wow. All right, well, I'm glad I pulled this thing off and looked instead of just trying to get it running and taking off with it. Okay, looking at this a little bit more and just thinking about how this would work, I could be wrong. I'm kind of hoping I am. Don't worry. If I'm not, I'm hoping that it wasn't run with this gone. I'm thinking that this hose was one piece. It come off this, it went up and went into the top, and um, it probably had a, I'm going to say it had like a clear section in it. That way you could see the oil level. And it probably had markings on that clear section, so you can tell. Uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm just guessing. But with that one broke off and that one gone and that's all that's coming out of it, I really hope it wasn't run because it doesn't look like there's any oil in there. And what's in it is pretty nasty. So I'm hoping all this is still good. I just gotta get to where I can try to spin this. Well, now all the more reason I'm glad I pulled this stuff off. Look at this blade. It is about rusted into no bueno. I don't think it would have made it very far. All right, let's check this side right here. Make sure it spins good. Oh yeah. Feels good. And then I gotta make sure how this, however this needs to get lubed, I, I wanna make sure. I don't know if you just need to take this little plug out. If it's grease packed, I'm not sure. I'll have to research it. <clears throat> so this belt is not tensioned and that's just where the engagement arm over here, this linkage. But when you stop it, it applies this brake and that's probably why this wheel doesn't turn. So let me, uh, let me flip that to like it would be trying to engage the blade or engage this belt, which should release that one. There's a piece of metal. It looks like a nail sticking up. Now uh, that belt tightened up nicely. That drum let go completely. So now you'd be trying to turn the engine here, but 
Let's see what it does. Now I know this belt's engaged. I think I should be able to move this, even just the slightest. Because I'm trying to turn the engine, and yeah, it's a diesel. But it ain't that big of a diesel. And I can get a good bite on these wheels. But I can't do nothing with it. So I'm going to uh, disengage the engine so this belt will get slack in it. I'm going to take the cover on top loose and see if I can just sit this belt off to the side. Now let's see if it'll spin. So the belt is definitely off of it. The brake, ah, clearly it's the brake. Spin for Papa. Oh, thank you, Lord. Feels good. Sweet. I'm going to replace all these belts on both wheels. Uh, I'm going to get this big drive belt here. I'm going to change the drive motor belts for the up, uh, up and down and the uh, power feed. So I'm going to go ahead and get all these belts off here. Not really the easiest thing to get off. These call to get replaced, I believe, every 500 hours. I'd be surprised if any of these belts have ever been changed. These lady slippers seem to work pretty good with getting these belts off. There we go. Bearing sounds good. I don't hear nothing. These are sealed bearings in here, so no need for any kind of service on this side. Before I mess with this, any more belts, especially this up and down belt for this saw head, I'm going to support it here with a chain just in case. Because there's a, there's a lot of tension on that chain. And this is a super heavy. All this engine and everything is supported by the belt that I'm getting ready to take off. So I want to uh, put a chain for around this top mast just so it's supported. That ought to hold it. So I'm going to put the weight onto this chain. I'm going to take the pressure off the main chain that it uses. Uh, that way I know it's holding that that chain is what's holding. I got the weight taken off of this vertical chain and I got all of it on this chain that I've put on it. So this is what's holding the weight of the saw head now. So I feel a little bit safer. So I got this main drive belt here loose. I just got to get it worked out of here. It looks like this bracket right here is going to have to come off. Uh, this is for the, uh, the braking band. So once I think I get that off, I think I can get this out. This belt right here is for the vertical movement i'm going to get this belt off and this one looks pretty simple because it's got a tensioner on the bottom of the motor down here so if you just grab this this bolt right here is almost like a hinge for it um you can almost take that right there and get that belt i think off so that's pretty sweet that's super simple almost a little too easy there's a spring right here um, that is what keeps tension on that belt I'm gonna pop this spring off and then I think I can just free wheel this wherever I want to and I should be able to get that belt out from around it it's a 
drum brake service tool. Ain't okay. too many drum brakes around anymore, but works for that. Looks I don't really want to bend this too much. I was hoping it was pivoted on the bottom. But let me pull this cotter pin right here out. Oh, there's my nut right there. This pair of side cutters have worked pretty good about getting cotter pins out. So they can bite into it and it's use whatever it is that you got near you as leverage and you can roll it right out usually. I don't think it needed that pin. Sheesh. Get all this mess scraped out of here. Look at that. Right, I'm going to take this chain loose now so I can take the uh, bearing on this side loose and this gearbox loose and get this worked out of here. So I can get all this cleaned out real good and then I think when I get all this out I can get the bottom band off on this brake and then this bell will come off and that way I can get here and I can clean all this really good. At least that's the plan. One tooth at a time. Quick little tip here. When you're trying to remove, uh, you know, multiple bolts out of a, out of something, um, leave the bolts that are easiest to get to tight. Work on the ones that are hardest to get to first. That way it should not cause the component to be in a bind and allow you to get them out with your hands like that once you get them broke loose. Hey, grease dirt. It had a cap on it. Another one to grease. Good deal. Now there's two set screws. Okay, right here is the set screw. Here's one of them. And this should be uh, tightened down and uh, engaged against the shaft. But when I was trying to clean this hole out so I could get an Allen wrench in, it, uh, it moves. So it wasn't even hooked to the shaft. I mean, it wasn't locked onto the shaft, and it should have been. So this stuff should come out of here now. This gearbox is not light. Oh. Oh. It don't feel too bad. I'm almost wondering if I just need to replace it while I got it out. Looks like it has been greased though. Look what a mess. A mess of a nest. I thought a lot of this was sawdust, but 90% of it was just this nest. <clears throat> it's almost half a bucket full of stuff. There's a little more in there. 
farther back in here. I'm gonna clean out, uh, there's a panel on the back side right here. I'm gonna take this panel here off and that way I can get it real good and clean it and I'm gonna get all this cleaned out. Then I'll go ahead and finish taking this uh, drum loose or this uh, brake band loose so I can get this belt off. Here's the bottom of the brake band. So I'm gonna take this loose and get this out of here. And I think I should be able to get this belt off in. That's a bingo. That's a beefy belt. I don't know if I showed you this before, but look at that. it does have a nail or piece of metal crammed down in it. So this definitely needs changed. I'm gonna take these clamps here off and I got some caps. I'm gonna put over these so I can get in here and we'll take an air nozzle and I'm gonna blow all this stuff out of here. That way nothing goes in there. And once I get all that stuff blowed out and cleaned out, <clears throat> um, I'll probably go ahead and run some trans fluid through this and try to flush out what's in there. I'm kind of curious what rolls out of it. That hose is just falling apart. All right, it calls for uh, ATF or Dextron 3 in this bearing right here. So I got some Valvoline Max Life, which uh, it's full synthetic, so that's a good thing. But I'm just going to flush it. This is combat compatible with Dextron 3. It's got a whole bunch of makes that it's compatible with, so I'm going to flush this through it and try to at least get what's in there out. Look at all that junk coming out of it. Flush a little bit more here. So you can see some of them big black chunks down in there. It flushed that out. So I'm gonna put caps back on this and uh, let it set for now until I get the right hose and stuff for it. I'm gonna pull this electrical uh, cover here off. I don't know what this big hex key is for. It's got a, got a bolt going into it but that's all it does i'm not sure what that's all about i'm gonna get all this cleaned out here i want to redo these wires i mean uh, if they don't have any damage areas on them i'm gonna leave them but i want to get them at least uh make sure there's no no issues with it and um, get the terminal ends make sure they're not corroded up i got some uh, anti-rust uh, corrosion agent that i'm gonna put on it but look at this that right there is what I'm looking for. That's that's no bueno. I mean, look how hot it is. It's got melted. It's melted the insulation. Look at this. There's another one. <laughs> that was laying up here where it comes through the box. It just, I mean, not barely wore. It is wore slap into it. Let me get this guy out of here. I got all these uh, terminals back here loose, but when I pulled these fuses off, so this one, this one was on the bottom, like that, and this one was behind it. And you can see where it got hot, and it. Let's see where it got a little hot there one time. Wow, look how rusted up those are. Super rusted. All right, next here, I'm gonna take the chain off um, that raises and lowers the mast, and I'm gonna soak it in some automatic transmission fluid. Now I'm gonna get this one right here off. Looks like a lug nut. Ugh. 
put it on backwards. Alright, here's the end that just popped off. Get all this picture up here. Pop it loose right here. And we'll get them chains soaking. There's that one. And there we go. We'll give these chains a bath and auto trans fluid. Then we get the power feed chain put in here. Let it soak for a little bit. That ought to do it. The next thing I want to mess with is the uh, wiring in here this is where another one of the places that the mice or mouse got into and caused some issue uh, all this tape right here is just bare wire uh, all this right here all this right here is bare wire here's the back cover off on the control panel you can see some of this stuff looks pretty good but then these relays in here see the corrosion build up on them over here and then there's all these wires that are damaged on the back side here's the side covers took off you see in there a little bit more uh, i mean it's just this relay right here is nasty looking and i think that runs the uh, power feed control i'm hoping i can get that stuff cleaned up and get those wires changed out without breaking anything causing more issues so another relay on this side which is Probably going to be the up and down, the vertical one. The more I look at this, the worse it gets. There are many, many wires that are corroded up or cut and nicked. And I mean, this is a rat's nest of wire in here. So I guess it was a good home for the mouse that was living here. You have this main stuff that's horrible looking. But what you got to look at is every little bit like all these little white wires coming out if you look right here it's nicked and it's corroding in here and i don't know how much that's wicked down this wire it may not have but i i'm in here i'm gonna fix this stuff it's just gonna this is gonna be uh, very time consuming and tedious lord willing all said and done we get it back together and everything works it'll be a a feat for me that's for sure it's slow going, uh, especially with work and trying to work on it little bits in the evening and everything, but I was able to get, uh, there was a, a relay right here that, um, from what I gather, goes to the starter. I do have a schematic, and uh, it's got the majority of this, but this relay right here, it does not have, so I'll have to just kind of figure out where these wires go so I can make sure to write it down and uh, so they get back put on the same way. I got all this box cleaned out the best about the best that I can do it. I got all the rust broke loose and I took my blower and blew all that stuff out of there. There is one ground stud in here, right here, and it had every ground in this box on it. I think there's 14 grounds on it. So the good thing is, is that's easy. I know where all of them go. Um, I got this panel here off, which has the power feed motor, which is this one. Here's my new wire that I got uh, so I can get it replaced. I got this, uh, these two relays off, or these two solenoids. Uh, right here are the, this is the vertical solenoids. And once I get done with uh, the power feed ones, I'll get them all cleaned up, put back on, hooked up, and then I'll pull this side off. I don't want to pull too much of this apart right now. Like I said, I do got a schematic, and the bulk of it's in here, but there's a couple of little variables that it's missing certain things. 
Here's the uh, power feed solenoids that I got off. Um, I got some wires pulled off of it. That's why it's kind of bare on top here. Um, I was able to check these solenoids. So um, it's it's a four lug. There's two on the top, two on the bottom. Um, the top side is normally open. The bottom side is normally closed. Uh, and this is how it achieves the reverse polarity in the motor. Uh, depending on how it switches these solenoids, it just applies a positive uh, to the positive and the ground to the ground, or it'll switch it and apply positive to the ground side. Typically, it would be the ground side and vice versa. Anyway, it'll, it will cause the motor to be, be bi-directional, so it can spin both ways. Anyways, so I'm checking the solenoids just to make sure they function and they can carry uh, a load across the terminals. I have already checked this one with the meter and it does, but let me show you real quick. So I got a negative lead here hooked up to the battery, to a battery. And uh, this is the control side right here, these two little ones. So I got the negative here. I'm gonna hook a positive one here and you'll hear it click. Well, so all it does is it's, like I said, this is normally um, open and this is normally closed. And when you click it, it just energizes that uh, relay or it, it makes it a magnet and it just sucks the contact up uh, pushing against the spring pressure it closes this side and it opens this side so it's pretty simple however this side does not do that I cannot get no sound out of this one now, uh, these are about 90 some bucks from Woodmiser. I have seen them on Amazon, somewhere around 70. I'd probably just go ahead and get the Woodmiser ones, that way they're exactly what I need. I'm gonna attempt to take these things, this thing apart. I don't know if you can, I don't know what it happens. I don't know if it's not serviceable, but I was gonna see if I might be able to. So I got these four screws already loose. There's one of them. And I'm just going to take them out, and I don't know what will happen. I mean, it does not work, so it's going to have to have one of these or this one. If this one cannot be fixed, and I'll be impressed if you're able to fix this. I got these uh, rivets right here ground down. Okay. I'd love to see the wire just come off for a solder broke right here. Yep, pretty simple. So you can see the studs down in there. The, the lugs, rather, these two. It's just a simple contact. Like I said, it's just spring pressure. It energizes it, sucks it up, lets it go. I think that's about all you can do with it. I don't... I can't get into this. Looks like it's soldered right here. And it looks like it's soldered right there. I mean, just for the sake of it, I'm going to see how far I can actually get this thing apart before it either is destroyed or I can't go no more. See there, that, that little isolator right there was broke. I need to get these wires off right here, but I don't want to cut it. I just want to get a hot melt of solder on it. There's that one. It's just one big bolt. Now let me take this bolt here out. There it is. 
And there's where it's broke. I don't know if it's broken in all these other little places. I don't know if that's, uh, I don't feel like it has any kind of coating on it. It would have to though, because if it, if it, if it didn't, then it would read, it would read a, a good, it would read next to no resistance because it would just be going across the sides of it. It's probably coated with something, if I was guessing. Let me get a meter. So here to here, I mean, we know that's nothing. Yeah, it, it is definitely coated in something. Well, well, well. You know, if uh, it looks, it looks like there's a couple places. Like right there's one that's burnt, and then right there's two. So right there's another spot. It got hot. Two spots. Three spots. Right there. Right there and right there. There's four right there. I mean, if I could get all these spots out of it, it might have enough... Uh, magnetism still to work but those other ones are pretty deep I'm losing a lot of winding here only if there wasn't any more I would almost try to wind this back and solder it together I mean the likelihood of this is like <laughs> like let me uh, take a little brush here to it, a little wire brush, and see if it cleans off. Oh, we got a reading. And I have uh, latex gloves on, so it's not reading through me. And I'll try not to touch this side. It's 13 ohms. 13 ohms. Let me see what this other one is. I was thinking it was higher than that. I thought it had a lot of resistance. No. 13 ohms. All right. Hey. Let me try it. Well, worst can happen is it don't work. Still got to come up with a solution for this uh, little plastic insulator. clean the back side of this I can still see that coating this side I got clean. note to self a grinder wheel will absolutely annihilate this in a in a blip let's, let's do this before I go any farther let me put power to it and uh, make sure it don't just burn right into well, I hear it I hear it uh, cracking popping Doing what it's supposed to do. Make sure I've still got a reading here. Still reading good. <sighs> All right. Um, what next? Uh, let's see. This was on the bottom. So that was down here. Well, let me go ahead and knock these down. I found a old AC refrigerant cap, and uh, it fits. I think if I cut it down, that that might work, possibly. So there it is. 
ground down. I had to drill out the middle a little bit. I got the nut back on it. This would go like this. Now I'll go ahead and put these screws in. That should hold that. Hold that to it. And then I'll tighten them up once I get done. Oh, I done messed up. Done messed up. You gotta put the spring in there. Okay. So this side right here should be open. There should be no reading, and it is. This side should read good. Excellent, excellent. When you energize it, so here, this side should read open, and it does. And this side should read good. And it does not. This thing is fighting me all the way. I got it back apart again. And I think the issue is, see that uh, makeshift spacer I got there? See how it keeps that gap? It don't let the contacts come all the way up. So I don't think they're touching at all. Right there. So I'm going to grind these edges right here off is all I'm going to try to do okay not the prettiest cuts but it's not hitting no more and uh, you see before I put everything back together so right there should be reading okay here goes nothing that's more like it make sure it works okay and, uh, it should be open now. Yep, this one should be together. There we go. So this one here. Power it up. And contacts. And just to double check this one down here to make sure it opened up. And one more time. And we'll pull the control off. Open up. And go back. Praise the Lord. I got it back together and it uh, should be ready to go now. I also have to make um, these flyback diodes. <clears throat> the two that was on these solenoids right here there was one on this one one on this one uh, right here is the one i just made uh this is what the original one looks like right here so it essentially it's just got a diode in the middle with some heat shrink and then it, it runs across the control side of the solenoid and these are what they call flyback diodes and it eliminates any kind of voltage spike once the uh, current is pulled off of the electromagnet, which is, that's all these are, is just a electromagnet. So it kind of helps uh, give your switches and uh, any kind of controls a longer life. I think it helps uh, keep them from causing them to fail prematurely. It gives them just a longer life. If you buy these from Woodmiser, they're about five bucks, give or take, a piece. You know, or you can just get them from Amazon and you can get like a 25 pack for like five bucks and you can make your own. So that's what I did. I guess I should explain what a diode does here real quick. Uh, it just lets current electric flow one direction only. So this one here is, uh, uh, yeah, this is a good one. So reading across the diode 
and my meter has a diode setting so I got it set on the diode setting and I'm reading out of limits so there's no continuity but if you flip it and you go reverse polarity there's half a volt so it's a it allows current to flow through that direction but that direction only I got the up and down solenoids out there right here right here is the uh, power feed which is the forward and back this one this set right here is all wired up and ready to go back in uh, this is the drum switch for the up and down this is the drum switch for forward and backward uh, i got one spring i'm missing that spring right there which is on this one i need it for this one so i'm gonna get these cleaned up i got this one already cleaned up i got some dielectric grease i'm gonna put on these contacts i'm gonna get this one cleaned up do the same when i started to check my up and down solenoids i got the same exact thing that i had with this one this solenoid works this one does not so i'm gonna have to go through tearing this one apart just like i did with these or rather with that one and um, see if i can find the burnt wire and uh, hopefully get it fixed so that's where i'm at i've got uh, a little bit more wiring to do and then i should be just about wrapped up with all that so so i finally got all the wiring repair done in here I, I just finished the last wire that needed repaired so i got all uh, various uh, multiple new wire and ends and connections uh, i got all that rust cleaned out of the bottom of it and then i got all my solenoids and my relays out I, i've already checked all them i had one of these circuit breakers break on me uh, so I got uh, one off the back right here for the debarker. I'm going to go ahead and mount it to this so that way I can put all this back in. The, that one will mount on the back side so it'll be easier to get to and I'll just pick one up whenever I go back out. Here's the vertical solenoids. Here's the power feed. Here's the drum switches for both of those controls. I got all these done. These are all working now. I got the, uh, this is the debarker relay. I got it out. Terminals cleaned up. Function tested. It's good. Whew. I'm uh, kind of glad to be done with the wiring, this portion. This was the part I was, uh, uh, I mean, I, I like doing this stuff, but this is a lot. This is probably a good day and a half worth of solid, nothing but just wiring. And right here is all the wires that I've replaced. That's a pile. Well, I'm finally done with the electrical side of it here. I got, I got everything back in it. Uh, drum switches, I got solenoids. Most of my solenoids are in. All my wiring's done. The only thing I don't have on is this back panel, which is right here. And I have to get a 15 amp circuit breaker for my debarker, which is what these two right here go to. And then it mounts on the inside right here. So I'm gonna leave all this out for now. Um, but all this should be done and good to go. Now I gotta jump back down here and uh, reinstall my solenoid down here, my fuses that go back in here. I gotta run me a new battery cable, positive battery cable. And then I gotta fix some other wires like this is on the negative side and there's a big red wire, which ain't good. All right, let me see if I can get this uh, all put back together here. I don't know if I explained or not last time uh, when I was taking this thing apart I seen this big hex key or hex rod right here I wasn't sure what that was well I found out what it was it's a jump post so say the battery's dead and it won't start you take this cover off there's a bolt and threaded through it into the bottom here you take this bolt out and this rod will come out and you thread it onto this stud back here so it sticks out to here then you can hook your jumper cable right here so you want these little roll seats come in pretty handy for this just this occasion I mean, it's even got a you can even adjust it up here works pretty good <laughs>
All right, well, we're live. I don't feel no heat. All right, I can't, I don't have no uh, motor hooked up to go up or down or front to back. But like I said, the motor should still kick on for the front to back. Um, the up and down is completely off. Yeah, the leads are apart, so. Um, but everything else, other than the debarker, which I think I can bypass and make just to check it, because that circuit breaker is missing. Um, so I don't want to crank it. Well, I might bump it, but I don't want it to start. So let's see what the first one does. Let me see if I can just bump the starter. She started like that. That scared me. Okay, that's good. Still don't see no smoke. All right, let's go back to the accessory. I really don't know how this stuff works, so I'm just trying to wing it here. <clears throat> so that would be the speed. So the motor moves toward me, but uh, it's not wanting to go forward. I, I believe that whenever we went to get it, the forward and backward motor, even when we jumped it straight to the motor, we had a hard time getting it moving. It was stuck. We did get it freed up, but it didn't move that freely. So, like I said, it, it's coming toward me, and now it ain't doing either one. I think that's the water solenoid kicking on. So that works. Excellent. I didn't even mess with that. Let me see if this works. This should be the board return right here. Hey. return works now the debarker which is below it and farther back that black rubber okay turning the debarker on I got no light oh that's the circuit breaker <laughs> that's the one I got my bad I will right, skip that we'll come back to that so let's try the blade roller guide adjustment so that should be the in and out right there. Sounds rough. Sounds really rough. So we'll get that lubed up and clean. So this should light up right here. Still don't see nothing. So it's moving, but it ain't coming on. So right there's that. It might not come on unless the forward is engaged. I would still think this no, it would only probably do that. So let's see. I flip this up. Um, let me move this forward. There it is. Sweet. Excellent. All right, here's, uh, here's for the vertical motor. This is up. Let's 
good. And here's down. And that looks wonderful. Okay, I was getting an intermittent uh, operation of the power feed motor. Like it would work, and then uh, it would work forward, it would work backward. And this is also this also has a rheostat that I forgot about to control how much voltage goes in the forward position just for the power feed. So backwards is full power, and then you can control this because that's you know as you're cutting the saw, however fast you want it to cut. And just to, because of the way it's acting. I just I think it's something in that motor so what I've done here I've hooked up this is the vertical motor that I had over on the bench I just got it sitting here and I got the wires for the power feed motor hooked to it <clears throat> and I think that's the whole issue it's, it's in the motor whether it be the brushes or not I hope it's just the brushes but I mean I can I've sat here and operated this one so it's on and then there's forward and see how slow it is now watch as I turn up the rheostat here I mean, there's full power. So again, it's, it's just this right here. And then there's reverse. Reverse. Forward again. We'll take the rheostat all the way down. It quits. So I barely turn up on the rheostat. And there goes the motor, like it should. So I'm going to pull the brushes out of that motor and uh, take a look at it. Hopefully it's just the brushes. I'm really hoping that's all it is. So I'm gonna have to end this video here. I'm, I'm gonna have to do this in a couple of different videos because just the time that it's that I've got into this and the length of the video itself would be a huge download and my internet service out here is not that good. Just keep an eye out for part two to be uploaded. Uh, I don't know when I'll get to it. Uh, it'll probably be a few weeks, but just be on the lookout for part two. Thanks for watching.